Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. So I have something a little um, different for the channel. Something a little bit more delicate, a little bit more literary, a little bit more cerebral. And to help me out with this, before we get started, may I introduce, uh, I think most of you know her, uh, Elisa, my lovely wife. Hello, Maven of the Oven Tide, etc., etc., and mother to a, uh, a funky little baby who you've also met uh, indirectly. The jelly bean baby. Yeah, the jelly bean baby. That's my baby. So, yes, uh, this is called The Lady's Choice, which I came across, I think, from a article on Kotaku. It's a visual novel based in uh, sort of Jane Austen times, and I know... Elisa is like a huge Jane Austen nerd. Okay, so Paul came to me and he's like, I found this game. Would you play it with me? It wasn't, no, it wasn't it, it like. Was, it was exactly like that. I wasn't, I, I did not have that air of quiet desperation about me. He always has that air of quiet desperation about him. Well, I'm usually very desperate. This is, uh, this was made uh, by one person, I believe, uh, as part of Nanorino, Nano, which is not Nanorimo, which is writing, but apparently a game jam just for visual novels. And on the website, there are like 1,100 of these things. We played through this once, um, just for funsies, and we, this, this that's, had that's to be done again. That's how much he wanted to play it. He yeah. wanted to do it just for funsies, not even to record it. He just begged me to play it with him for fun. I might be sort of getting into the visual novels. I can't He's lie. He's also really into Jane Austen and Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Ever since he saw that Kate Beaton comic with the fur thing, he's been, he's been kind of into it. And we watched several versions of Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, and then we also watched, uh, what was it, uh, Lost in Austen? That awesome, what was it? That wasn't a Netflix show, but something like that. Uh -huh. I really like that. With that sort of, not Firth, but almost like a, a very reasonable facsimile Firth. And then she even made him like get into the pond with his clothes on. He's like, okay. He's like, you're calling Firth, I knew it. So, <laughs> you, you need to see Bridget Jones' diary. Oh, uh, God, no, I, I can't, I can't we're not watch Renee Zellweger in anything. Especially not with a British accent. Let's do So last time, we, we played this through normally, and I think we picked the... the the captain guy as our as our so the bow. premise of this game is you are a Jane Austen heroine type person and you're thrown into society and you have a romance and you can choose from several guys to have your romance with which I didn't realize the first time I thought I was just choosing a party to go to but no, it was very clear that's like, you, this is the one of the three people you would be allowed to bone uh, in, in Jane Austen ways. I mean, you, you'll be like, you'll touch this person. Maybe with an ungloved hand, you hussy. Last time we played this, I was the main character and Paul was everybody, I was everybody else. else. Everybody else, so we're going to do the same thing this time. Oh, okay, fine. And this is our heretofore unnamed character who looks like she has a... A thumb for a nose. That that obviously looks like a fingernail right there. I think she's adorable. She's cute. Yeah, she's super cute. She, yeah. My aunt once told me a lack of good society will drive the wits from a de any decent person. I smiled to myself, unsure if I've instead lost my wits for agreeing to return to society. But I could not avoid it for much longer. Arabella's pleas growing too incessant to ignore. And, as she has always been my closest friend, I did not have the heart to deny her wishes. It has been many years since I last came to Bath, instead having kept my own company at my family's estate. Last time I was in society, it was... A debacle! A disaster! Oh, disaster is actually an option, that's right. Oh wait, I think that's what we chose last time, wasn't it? Like... Yeah, I mean, last time we played this, I did it very much what myself would have chosen, and very calculating efficient logical choices very i guess beep boop boop hey uh, jane austen beep sorry slytherin <laughs> so you want to do it like a little bit more huffle puffly this time no uh, she's not a ravenclaw we'll, do, we'll go gryffindor then she'll be bold and outspoken mm. and very that's a jane austen trait but no it's not jane austen is like you know the other characters are like repressed and just like Oh, everything's awful. Hand, hand, back of the hand of the forehead, fainting, vapors. You know that's not true. Cotillions. You have watched way too much Jane Austen to believe that's true. <laughs> I would never admit it on air. 
Jane Eyre. <laughs> That's Bronte. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Bronte. Lit- that was a literary reference. So last time we did it was a disaster because she was like, oh, so tragic and yada yada. But now she's going to be like more impetuous and impulsive. Last time was in society. It was exciting. A most exciting. A most exciting time. Though being so young, what, like 17? Well, she's 18 and unmarried. She's basically a dowager at this point. I barely understood the nuances that make up the rules for being in such high company. I enjoyed attending many functions as I could, meeting the same people as usual. My mind was far from seeking a husband, and though I enjoyed my time greatly, not pursuing any kind of marriage had made me somewhat of a joke amongst everyone. (gasps) She doesn't want to get married! She must be a joke! This is right out of Pride and Prejudice, isn't it? Because she she didn't want to get married either, right? No, uh, all the... the Pride and Prejudice starts with, uh, husband must be in want of a wife. You know, it's all about getting married and finding a man match. must have his marriage. But you, there's other Jane Austen novels where they aren't as focused on marriage. Jane so. Austen wrote other novels? <laughs> oh. Was that the one with zombies in it? Oh, honey. <laughs> when I finally came to realize this, I ignored the whispers and continued to attend all the gatherings. Because who cares what other people think? True Gryffindor. I ignored the gossip as best I could manage, focusing instead on continuing to enjoy myself because I was only, what, like 12? So you know (laughs) what difference did it make? I just noticed that she has a a fingernail for a nose. No, 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 there's there's a finger. Look, there's the finger, then there's the fingernail. Uh, No. Unsee it. She's cute. Look, she has like a big mouth. It's adorable. But... Mm, that should be a, a, an undesirable trait amongst the women of the era. Do they Any- have to like to wear those special metal masks and the tongue depressor and be marched around town? Remember seeing those things? Yeah, when I was in Regency times. Yes. The task became more difficult as my group of friends gradually found matches and only I was left because apparently not focusing on marriage means you won't ever find someone to marry. Nope, you will never find your true love. Though Arabella had always stayed with me. With a gentle sigh, I clasped the handkerchief in my hand tighter, return, running my thumb over my name, which my mother had embellished onto it with such delicate needlework. Ah, okay. So last time we just kind of, it was, a, we kind of self-inserted a little bit, so you were just Elizabeth, so we just, do we just keep it the same? Or do you want to do something a little bit different since you're going to be playing things a little out of character? <sighs> I mean, last time when my name was Elizabeth, you couldn't pronounce my name whenever you were another character saying my name because I, my own husband doesn't know my own it, name. It's uh, you see it, and it just uh, look. So her name is spelled like this. It's Elizabeth, but then every time I look at it, all I see is Elizabeth. I'm sorry. I am your wife. This is my name. Because usually I just call you like Pookie. Well, or our character is not named Pookie. Love us. Sugar to... Never mind. So we just, let's just keep it as, as Elizabeth. Now okay, I promise... but you have to say it right. If you don't say it right, I'm hitting you. Okay, fine. You guys heard it first. Should we do <laughs> so, the same thing? Yes. So I don't know where he came up with this last time, but this is the name he gave me because apparently he thought this was Jane austen <laughs> and appropriate. Chance in his portmanteau of our two last names. And then Smythe is just like the most British of British names. It's so... Terry Thomas, <laughs> Smythe, oh, Jen, Jen, Smythe. And then if that's the most British thing you've ever heard, you've got to do it twice. She's got a hyphen in her name. How awesome is that? Two hyphens? Strong, independent woman. You fret unnecessarily, Elizabeth. Elizabeth? I did it already. I Did I mention we were having rum drinks uh, during this uh, recording? You can't pronounce my name when you're stone cold sober. Yeah, you're right. I have problems with words. Oh my. <laughs> Are we going to have carriage sex? <laughs> Arabella lays a hand on my arm and I shift my gaze to her, smiling softly. I believe you will enjoy returning far more than you suppose. Her smile turns to one of mischief. Ooh, that freckles my cheeks. I know. Oh, look, 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 look. This is, maybe it's just the art style, but look, she definitely has a toe. For a nose, there's the there's the big toe we and then the toe. Na- the art. This is a Nano Remo project. They did the best they could. Nano Re- Nano Reno. So I didn't know that thing existed. So I feel like I have actually learned something today. You learn things most days. <laughs> and society will enjoy your company far more than it may remember. Let us hope so. 
The road gradually smooths, announcing our arrival into town from the country roads. I expect Lord Chance and Smythe's my servants will surprise at the announcement of our staying in Bath. It has been a long time since my father sent word to the townhouse staff. I just realized that's got to be a really long handkerchief to have a moniker of that length. <laughs> I think it's just my first name, or maybe even just my initials. <laughs> E-S-S-S? -S -S? <laughs> my name is S. <laughs> Oh, okay, so how excited... I'm not sure if this has any reference to the rest of the game, but... I guess it shows how I treat domestic stuff, but I mean, like, they work for us. Why wouldn't they be... Yeah, I think last time we did this, like, well, they are in our service. They are a bunch of servants, It's but like we're paying them to keep this house for us. Like, why would they that's, not... That's that's the Ravenclaw Slytherin answer, though. So we got to be more Gryffindor with this. It's, it's like all the rest are, like, softy... Well, Answers. Gryffindors are a bunch of softies. I hope everything is prepared in the case of guests. That may, that might be Hufflepuff. No. Is that Gryffindor? H Hufflepuff would be like, I hope they have cookies on their pillows because <laughs> I love them so much and I'm going to give them a cup of cocoa and read them bedtime stories. Oh, hugs for everyone. I found a little. I'm sure they have had time enough to equip the house. I do hope they have managed to lay the house in time. It makes it sound like they're building the house. <laughs> I should hate to be ill prepared should a guest arrive. Arabella pats my arm. She's like, oh, honey, nobody's oh, coming yo. to see you. It's, uh, yeah, Nobody. we're out there in the middle of nowhere. No one's coming to your boarding house. It is unlikely that visitors will attend you before the opening ball of the season. It has been such a long while since anyone from your family has left the country estate. I imagine talk of your return is the main topic of conversation. I can't help but stiffen at the thought. See, if I was a man, that would be a whole different carriage sex situation. <laughs> is that all you think about is carriage sex? <laughs> Arabella leans to look out the window, a smile lighting her face. Ah, here we are. I stared at the house the last time I laid eyes on it, being so long ago. It has changed little in the 16 months since I was here last, when <laughs> I was so young and unmarried. Yes, I was sure I saw a single flower in this bleak landscape. Shall we go in, Elizabeth? <gasps> you said my name right. I, I, I worked hard. I cannot very well precede you into your very own house. Ah, she has to be invited. Vampire. <sighs> she gives a chuckle and a smile in return before eventually making my way inside. Arabella, have you seen my bucket? As soon as we step inside, a somewhat familiar face steps into the foyer to greet us. Welcome home, Miss, Miss Johnson Smythe Smythe. Johnson, our butler, has aged considerably since I last saw him last month. Hmm? <laughs> How often do you get to go see Johnson? Man has now turned into a slightly haunched gentleman with far more wrinkles than her. How long has she been out of society? Like, how young could she have possibly been? And how old could she possibly be now? So, a stout, bent Johnson. Thank you, Johnson. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Thank you, Johnson. It's been a long Oh, God. Wild. No, never, game developers never name a character Johnson because you're asking for it. And this must be Miss Highsmith. It's Lady Ashbourne now. His brows curve in surprise. I quite forgot your marriage. I apologize, Lady Ashbourne. Clearly, he doesn't follow her on Twitter. <laughs> She waves away as a pool, G. Do not be so stuffy, Johnson. I'm the same as... I'm still the same girl I always was. If someone want more grown now. Oh, my. <laughs> as I can see. <sighs> he states with a wry smile. Notice my stiff upper lip. You're not staying with Sir Ashbourne. He... Uh, he passed away the year before last. How are you going to react to your friend? <sighs> It's been two years. She is so over. Also, I know this from playing the game the last time. He was not the greatest guy, so I shall greatly enjoy the company the two of us. No, okay, because I think last time we did like the comforting hand and everything because we were so proper, but now we're just like, hey, everything's yeah, great. But last time we were also coming from disaster, and now we're coming from excitement. Oh, so. that's right. I keep forgetting. Yeah, this is all new. I greatly value only our company alone anyway, Arabella. That was a strange reading. Don't look at me like that. I'm sorry. Her pain eases a little, and I try to give as much of a comforting smile as 
yes, I can. Getting a little creepy, but you will wish to attend to your rooms before tea. Rooms? Zzz. I don't think she was on. I said I enjoy our company, oh. didn't I? Mm. Yes. Thank you. He gives a small moment, and we begin to shrug out of our coats and hats. After settling ourselves and luggage into our rooms, we meet again for tea in the drawing room. I hope tonight's ball will be busy. A ball already? You really have forgotten society, haven't you? The ball tonight will open the season. She takes a sip of tea, staring over the brim of her teacup. Now, what's weird about this whole season thing, because A, they capitalize season, and they make it seem like the season is just like duck season or rabbit season except it's like pretty wife much, and husband season pretty much it's like fucking season yeah it's fucking season it's, fu- <laughs> it's fucking season man can we just it's Jane we- Austen bitch oh I just want to make a game called fucking season isn't that leisure suit Larry oh oh look at you with your knowledge oh I married the right I married well everyone will be in attendance including us including us her lips curve into a secretive smile, and I frown slightly in curiosity. Why are you smiling so, Arabella? The question was obviously just a prompt she needed. She places down a cup so excitedly it rattles against the saucer. Oh, control your impulses, Arabella. I believe I may soon be engaged. Engaged? Engaged! My family have been in talks with another... A, about a suitable partner. Is this why you are so insistent I join you this year? I don't want to enter into all this alone, I admit. And you were there for me in my last marriage, even when no one else was. Your advice is the only one I would care for. I understand. So, who is he? She shifts back in her seat, picking up a cup once again. I cannot tell you yet as much as I wish. I do not want to talk of it without more certainty of the situation. So it's not settled. She shakes her head and then gives a small smile. But I have hopes it soon will be. I take a gulp of tea, unsure how to respond. Not once has Arabella seemed keen on remarrying, having inherited both title and wealth from her former husband. I glance at her, studying the smile on her face. It seems genuine. I did not know you were in the market for someone new. You do not need a husband to secure your place in society any longer, Arabella. Of course I do not need a husband. But it does not mean I do not wish for someone to share my life with. What about me? (laughs) I I give an order of understanding. Look how distraught she is now. You're ruining this. I thought we were going to have like lesbian adventures in bath. (laughs) Adventures in the bath. See if a fucking season. Oh, maybe you will also meet someone of your own liking tonight, Elizabeth. Society has much changed since the last time you were here. Oh, six months ago. <laughs> how, how how far go in between seasons? Is it like every it's, spring? Uh, no, yeah, it's once a year. Once a year, okay. It's bath season. Bath season. My <laughs> once a year bath. <laughs> it's Regency era. Look at her unsurely. My nerves are already on edge about tonight's ball. That evening, we arrive at already bustling assembly rooms for the opening ball of the season. Oh, how wonderful. So many here already. We don't even change frocks for the ball. She's still in her nightgown. There are certainly so many. The assembly rooms are large, but seem positively tiny when packed with so many people. The heat is stifling, and I do my best to stand in the way of the doors, hoping for the coolness of a draft. There's Lady Steer. Arabella points through the crowd, but I cannot pick one person out from the mass. I must ask how she's been. I shall return in a moment. Before I can protest, she is swallowed up by the crowd, and I am left standing alone at the edge of the room. Excuse me? I turn around to see a young woman smiling at me. Well, I guess that's the voice we're sticking with now. I realize we have not been introduced. I saw you speaking to Lady Ashbourne. Simply hard to know you. I am Miss Claire Witter. She bops a small cutsy. Read that as boobs, not gonna lie. <laughs> Alright, what are we doing, Gryffindor? Uh, very nice to make your acquaintance. Not how she be introduced, not proper. A bold introduction. That's I am one. pleased for it. Okay. This uh, would 
is this no. really they were they really that stuffy in, in uh, Regency times? Where I mean, like, if, if I'm how like, dare you come up and talk to me? If have, I am not interested in meeting people. If I'm just so against it, I'm just here for Arabella, Arabella and I don't want to meet anybody. Then yes, I'd be like, bitch, please do not come and talk to me without a proper introduction. Do you know who I am? Leave me alone. You are only here because you saw me talking to Lady Ashbourne and you want to use me to get to my friend? No. So many I am rules. the gatekeeper to my friend and you will not use me to get to my friend, so back off. Simple yes or no would have done. Uh, but we're going to go with the bottom one. Okay. We're being friendly. Uh, that's quite a bold introduction, Miss Winter. And I am pleased for it. Do you want to have carrot sex? <laughs> Definitely carrot sex. I miss Elizabeth Shanza Smythe. My mother has spoken of your return. Have you truly not been in town so long? I start a little at the abruptness of the question. Miss Witter, obviously a lot younger than her looks would suggest. She must be like 17 and I must be 19. And oh my goodness, she's a freshman I'm and so I'm a senior. Old. It's been quite some time, yes. Then you must simply be desperate for enjoyment. How dull it must have been in the country. I barely have time to open my mouth to respond before she speaks again. Come, we must dance. I have a partner waiting for me, but we should find someone for you too. She takes my hand and tugs me to one side. Oh, Mr. Amesbury. It lands up with a search for the person she has called. Mr. Amesbury. She raises her voice to be heard over the din of people. I finally manage to free my fingers from her excited grasp. Can I help you, Miss Witter? What is he a vampire? No, he's, he's like he's like swarthy in Spanish by what I saw from the picture. Amesbury sounds so Spanish. See, si. a rather jovial voice asks from the sea of people. I glance up to meet eyes with a handsome, youthful face framed by thick locks of blonde curls. Yes, so Spanish. <laughs> He looks like um. Oh my God, he looks exactly like a young David Hasselhoff in like Knight Rider era. That's amazing. Thumbs up, bro. Lawrence, this is Miss Elizabeth Shanson Smite Smite, and she is without a partner for this dance. She's on first name terms with Mr. Amesbury? Well, I think you can introduce them by their full names, but you're not no. like, like, call. No, no, remember the last time we played this game? They were, like, dating for months before they got on first name terms. We didn't see time She weird. has slept with this guy. Whoa. That is, what that is a me. bold accusation. Yeah. Or she's just a Oh, so, so she even sees like, oh, the bold nature of the young woman calling me by my first name. I can't help but my cheeks heating at the forward nature of the young woman. I apologize. I would be most happy to rectify the situation, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe. Before I can speak my apology, Mr. Ainsbury holds out a hand towards me. Dance. Would you like to dance or would you like to don't dance? <laughs> Let's dance. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Amesbury. He gives a wide smile and I place my hand gently into his and we make our way towards where the only partners are lighting up for the dance. He when phases out of existence. <laughs> the news begins that the line of ladies takes a wide step forward and the men doing the same to meet in the middle. I take Mr. Amesbury's hand again and we walk in unison down the middle of the room. You shall not be offended by Miss Wither's forward manners, Miss Shanson's Smythe, Smythe. Her parents have rather indulged her, and she has little worry of upsetting the rules. <laughs> so I could tell the floozy. Oh my. If only more were of our disposition, wouldn't you agree? We part for a moment, taking it in about another set of partners before meeting once again. Hello again. Uh, it's nice to meet people so cheerful at last. I welcome a welcome introduction to those who would speak over rules, a disposition that may very well cause more trouble than cheer. Her parents should not indulge such frivolity as cheerful as it may make her. Well, considering that last time I was the miswitter of the situation and I regret it, I'm going to go with more trouble than cheer. Really? Just because I am, I've learned. I don't necessarily disapprove, but I've learned. Okay. So I like how we're not just going like straight Gryffindor answers. It's like we we are sort of a modified Gryffindor. A oh, Gryffindor we're like with the feels. Hermione's, you know? Hermione was Gryffindor. Really? Oh, that's right. She was. Yeah. Wow. It's been so long since I've not read the books. I smile at him as we come back together again. Is a disposition that may cause her more trouble than cheer in the future. So she should not enjoy it while she can in her youth. 
before finally bowing to the dour manners that we older people inevitably end up with, you mean? You seem far from dour, Miss Shanson Smythe-Smythe. You have not known me long enough to make such assumptions, Mr. Amesbury. Mm, you're off to a bad start, Mr. Amesbury. He gives a chuckle at my reply. <laughs> we then part from each other and change partners for a few beats. When we return, he takes my hand and leads me around outside of the floor and around other partners. I hear you have been out of society for quite some time. I give him a small nod. Then we are in similar situations, as I too have not been required to return to town for many years. And yet you return now. I have had little choice. This frown turns into a joking smile. Hey. You know how family can be about securing their lineage. I smile in understanding. Actually, I've been most lucky that my family have never pushed me to pursue marriage. We draw together once more and the music fading slowly. Then consider yourself incredibly fortunate, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe. That guy, I'm getting really... Can I shorten that, please? Can I just call you Miss S... He offers a smile before bending at the waist in a low bow. It has been a pleasure. And with that, he lets my hand drop before disappearing into the crowd. <sighs> Thankfully, I'm not alone long, as Arabella finds me soon after. I have a feeling we're about to meet at least two other people. Elizabeth! Damn it! <laughs> Elizabeth! I'm going to have to, like, start putting coins into a jar for this. I like my personal swear <laughs> How jar. How long have we been married and you don't know my name? Sorry, Janet. Elizabeth, you must make haste and come this way. What's happened? Some military officers are being stationed in Bath for a few days and have come for an introductions tonight. The fleet's in. <laughs> oh, <we're laughs> ah. So dashing, I almost fainted where I stood. And what if you're betrayed? Fuck them! <laughs> <laughs> they'll be gone by. They'll be gone in three days. You'll never know. What happens in Bath stays in Bath. He's not my betrothed yet. I would have blushed from her words had I not grown used to them years ago. With all the carriage sex. <laughs> carriage sex again. She leads me to one side of the room where a swath of young women have taken up. Arabella pays them little mind as she squeezes through them with a practiced elegance. Finally, we come to a stop before a tall, uniformed man. It's hard not to find a slight rather pleasing. Oh, I missed him. Yes, he was in the last version of this game we played, <laughs> so we can't choose him again this time. Colonel Foxley? At the sound of a voice, the man's face lights into a bright smile. Bing! Lady Ashbourne! I would have been most pleased to introduce you to my closest friend, Miss Elizabeth Shanson Smith. Ding, another coin in the jar. He dips me into a bow, and I drop into a small curtsy. It is most delightful to meet you, Lady Ash. Please, Colonel, Arabella will do just fine. But L Lady Ashbourne, it's only a name, Colonel. The Colonel clears his throat before continuing what he was saying. Arabella has been most kind in helping us find our way around. I'm certain it's a task she would take very much to heart. The music ends with the next dance and Arabella suddenly brightens. Oh, Colonel, did you not promise me the next dance? Indeed I did. Arabella moves forward to slip her arm into his. But what of Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe? Oh, please, do not miss out on the dance on account of me. I am. I am most happy to observe. I would not dream of such. He turns around and scans the room before smiling and tapping another uniform man me, on the me, shoulder. Me, my name, Mo. A man steps closer towards us, his stiff posture and countenance enough to make me uneasy myself. I think this is why we chose him last time. It's just the, the, them damn them cheekbones. <laughs> so Yeah, this was the guy we went with last time, so we can't choose him again this time. It's because he was like the dark brooding type, and he just had that kind of furthy thing. And you the, know me. And sideburns. And you are into the firth, so... Yeah, it's the furthy. Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe, may I present Captain Guy Blake as suitable enough partner for this dance. Foxley, this this is not... Ah, oh, come now, guy. You cannot be upset by the partner, can you? Captain Blake turns his gaze away uneasily. Uh, it's not a question of that. And of course, Elizabeth would have... That was like a real combination between the two. It's better. Thank you. And of course, Elizabeth would have no upset in taking out a fine officer. Without saying a word more, the two moved to the dance floor. 
If you would care to, Miss Jansen Smythe Smythe, I would reserve this dance for you. His words and manner are both unsettled, his gaze shifting momentarily to check on Colonel Foxley. You know what, last time we danced with him, and he was the guy we ended up choosing, and since we're definitely not going to choose him this time, why don't we not dance? He's clearly not into it, he's not interested, let's let him off the hook. His friend pushed him into this, we want to be nice this time, so this oh, time... Oh, but you're going to embarrass the poor guy. He wants to be off the hook. You're, okay. And you know what? We're not choosing him, so we won't matter. So we won't dance. All right. Sorry, guy. I believe it would be preferable to set this one out, Captain. Oh, oh, so well, sorry. <laughs> okay. I thought that, oh. I saw that look on his face. It's like, oh, God, we broke his heart. He drops his hand to his side and lets out a small sigh of relief. As you wish. We stand together as we watch the others take to the floor and begin their dance. The longer we stand together, the more tense the captain seems to grow. I think this actually increases our chances oh, with him now. Oh man, <laughs> this guy is our true love. <laughs> oh, look at that sneer. Nope, we blew it somehow. It's not long before I notice a look of what I can only see is disdain curl in the corner of his lips. You dislike dancing or the crowds, Captain? His bows arch in surprise of my question and he looks at me. The crowds are not what I am accustomed to. Or what I should ever want to be accustomed to. Surely you have been in such society many times before. My attendance here is due to my rank, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe, not my birth. Oh. Unsure of his meaning, a little hesitant to ask more, so I simply let the conversation dwindle. I, I, but I hope you do not take offense from my statement. Please. Uh, of course I do not take offense. You should not judge everyone simply on their societal rank. I find it good practice to take a little offense from everything, none taken. Oh, Captain, I think you find it's good practice to take a little offense to everything. His brows rise and surprise my words until it comes to the realization that I meant it in light. Joke not registering. Joke found. React. You take pleasure in teasing those around you, Miss Chanson Smythe Smythe. Only if they're open to take a little offense themselves. I give a small laugh, and his smile widens a little. When the dancing is over, Arabella and the Colonel rejoin us. You should have danced, guy! Miss Jansen Smythe Smythe did not care for it. It's true, that the captain was very gracious to Wolfa. I glanced at the captain to find him smiling at me in gratitude. Well, I enjoyed the exercise. It was indeed a most enjoyable distraction. After bowing, the captain and Colonel leave us to rejoin their fellow officers. I most regret not being a fan. I suddenly feel quite flushed. Arabella! I cannot help how my body reacts to such a man, Elizabeth. I don't believe any woman could. See, this is why we chose this guy last time, because Arabella was into his friend and we wanted to help her out. Because are you sure it wasn't because of the firth in the in the uniform? Y yeah, it it was. It was the cheekbones that did it. I know you. I wanted to help my friend. You out. wanted the brooding one. Admit it. I think you wanted the brooding. All right, fine. I want to see where the story went. I just wanted to keep as close to pride and prejudices as humanly possible. <laughs> but there are no zombies. No. Oh. We left quietly before I noticed the crowds around us had parted. Oh, it is Lady Thomasina Huntington. Who's Lady Huntington? Oh, you'll learn. Really, Elizabeth, have you no interest in society at all these years? Never mind. Before Arabella has a chance to inform me of why the woman approaching us has caused the crowds to tremble like scared mice, Lady Huntington stops before us. Dun. We drop into shortcuts, so the woman does not return one. I can't anymore. Lady Ashbourne, this is your good friend, I assume? Yes, Lady Huntington, may I present Elizabeth Shenson Smythe Smythe? Damn, another coin in the jar. The woman glances over me with a glare that only I can believe has been mustered over inspecting many a young woman. Hmm. So I guess oh, well. she's not married either. <laughs> she's got a harem! <gasps> When finished, she snaps her fan shot and gives a small nod of satisfaction. You have been out of good society for so long, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe. You must be thankful your parents let you return. Excuse me? 
though she did not speak as a question, I cannot stifle the urge to make a reply. Let me guess, there's a choice involved. Yeah. Not in society of my own choosing. Think, whoops. Think better of it and give only a nod of acceptance. I am pleased to be back. The first. The first. Okay. I adopt as much of a restrained smile as I can. In fact, Lady Huntington, I was not in society of my own choosing. My parents have allowed me to make my own decisions, one of them being my choice to return to town or not over the years. Woman's brow shoot up as far as I fear they may disappear into her hairline. I see they have certainly allowed you many freedoms. She shifts a little closer and I do my best to hold my ground against her imposing presence. I shall give you a modicum of advice. Such freedoms are not valued highly by the refined classes of town. A.K.A. the patriarchy. Mm. Such an open nature is not wanted by prospective husbands. Maybe that's why I have carriage sex with ladies. Ooh, who's having more fun now, biatch? Which I do believe shall be waning in number already due to your many years of experience over the other ladies. Hmm. She gives a sharp curtsy. <laughs> Good evening, Lady Ashbourne. Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe, enjoy the ball. And with these words, her insult to my age, she sweeps away into the crowds. Twinkle, twinkle. Are you quite all right, Elizabeth? I have a small nod, which does not completely deter Arabella's concerns, but it's enough to calm her a little more. Lady Hunterton's the gatekeeper, in which all society must please to secure a good future. You couldn't have told me that before I dissed her. My bad. Guess I'm going to be getting all the hot men. I was negligent not to warn you of her. Uh, you are not fault. Notice her manners, which are negligent. Her sour expression on the face should have been a beacon of warning. Uh, it would have been nice to know beforehand. That one. Okay. It would have been nice to have been prepared myself beforehand. It's true. She glances away for Friendship over. Did the colonel not ask for the next dance with you, Arabella? Bitch, go away. Uh, oh, I almost quite forgot. Almost forgot. Well, I could never altogether forget my invitation from that man. I shook my hand slightly at her words. What, what of you? Go and enjoy the company of your officer, Arabella. I'm sure another man will be approaching any moment. She doesn't need much more convincing than that before giving a broad smile and setting off to find her uniformed partner. As the partners begin to move to the dance floor, I shuffle to one side out of the way, only to bang right into someone beside me. Oh, I apologize. Glance up away, quite away to meet eyes with a tall, well held gentleman. Oh, I should have saved the accent for this guy. It reminds me, of, he looks like uh, Hamilton. You just wrap everything. That's <laughs> <laughs> I believe I should be the one. <laughs> uh, that's how wrapping works, right? Um, I believe I should be the one to make such an apology, miss. He glances to the side and then returns his gaze to me. How about I make up such a calamity on my part with a dance? He offers his hand towards me. He's an American. I can assure you that I am not anywhere near as clumsy when on the dance floor. Uh, but we are not yet introduced. You and I know that fact, but I believe the rest of the room does not. Office his hand again. Would you care to take the chance on such a scandal? His teasing makes me hesitate. Oh, I remember. Oh, this yeah, guy. this is the guy who was like. So this is a guy who we did dance with him last time, and everyone was like, oh, I can't believe you danced with him. It's so scandalous. He has such a bad reputation. So, knowing that now, because last time we danced with him, so let's, let's, let's not dance with him then. Let's see what happens if we don't. All right, so we don't dance. And what's cool about this is since it's a visual novel, if you make a decision that you don't like, you can save and load, but you can also just like go back as far as you want. And try yeah, again. last time we dumped the guy we were dating just to see what would happen. Yeah, and the <laughs> game just like ended. It's like, okay, you're both heartbreak in the end. <laughs> it was awful. And then we went back to our safe Yeah, that's like, oh, you met him like a year from now. And then he just like looked at you with emotionless eyes. Yes, like we broke his heart and he never recovered. It was really sad. I'm afraid so. 
that I have scandaled quite enough without taking to the floor with a stranger. Yes, after our last experience with Lady Society Gatekeeper, maybe we should probably be careful. Oh, look at that. His, his expression changed dramatically. Yeah, well, I don't know this random stranger. I just bumped into it and he's like, how about a scandal, huh? Yeah, that's probably, we probably had our fair share of scandals. Now yeah. we're being looked, watched by Miss Huntington. He pulls his hand back, his brows raising in surprise at my statement. I admit I am surprised to hear such, and now I am most curious as to what a young woman like yourself could be a scandal to. It's been many years since I have returned to Bath, which is gossip enough for most people. Yes, I can certainly imagine. We stand together to observe the dancers as they start and swing the dance. I have been under the scrutiny of society for some time, so you are in good company. And what folly have you committed, may I ask? Oh, something far worse than absence of company. I cannot help my curiosity being piqued. But he continues before I can ask further. Can you help me get this whipped cream off of my collar? It is rather refreshing to meet someone who does not know of me before they've even met me. I wish I could meet more such people. You must be really nasty. <laughs> Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. I would not have judged you before meeting you even though I knew of your scandal. I assure you I am most capable of forming my own opinions. I believe the people who would not judge are ensnared in the scandal themselves. If people did not do wrongful acts, they would have no fear of scandal. So this is like the glass houses cast the first stone. I kind of like that one. Okay. Because the others are a bit self-defensive and this one's more like, oh, whatever. What if? Yeah. If people did not engage in such wrongful acts, they should have no fear of scandal. A refreshing and idealistic statement. But how many of us can truly be free of all wrongdoings? Is it your choice to stay out of society for wrongdoing? I would not consider it so, but still people would gossip on it. It is how our society is built. There is no escape from that. I cannot deny the truth in his statement, even if I do not wish to hear it. And now, though I have thoroughly depressed our light conversation, I shall take my leave. Give a small laugh as to relieve some of the heavy air, and I smile in return. It has been a most interesting time. Indeed it has. With a final nod of his head, he turns and leaves. I watch as his broad fame disappears into the crowd. Oh, he's got a broad frame. And he's very tall. I mean, these are very attractive qualities. <laughs> Elizabeth, what are you doing standing there with such a man? I spit around in shock air, Bella's out. It's not like I danced with him. What, are, oh. what on earth do you mean? Lord Stanton, of course. Oh, he's a lord. My goodness. Who is... You were not even introduced. I clasp her hands, trying to calm her down in her hysterics, as I feel she may faint from shock. You truly spoke with such a man without knowing him. I'm sure there have been worse things done, Arabella. You would not say such things if you knew of him. She saddles closer to whisper to me. That is the Vicon Stanton of Braxbury, Lord Isaac Stanton. She turns to gorge my expression, and seeing no sign of recognition, she continues. The man whore! His family name was once well respected. His father took up an affair with a local gambling house, and it would appear that passion runs in the family. Apparently there was no fortune left. His presence at these events is purely due to his lineage, nothing more. You should be more careful in future of associating with such company. Excuse me? I don't know, maybe this guy deserves a chance. I'm just saying, do not. I don't know, is he like the is he do. the Gryffindor route though? No, but you're like, oh, he's got a bad reputation, so you should stay away from him, and I'm like He's a fixer upper. No, but maybe he needs a friend. Actually, no, the last guy was a fixer upper because he was a Yeah, the last guy. He was an insecure oh, doofus. God. He came around in the end and I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, he he punched a dude. Guy Blake was definitely a fixer-upper. I glance into the crowd where the man has disappeared, suddenly understanding our conversation a little more. Actually, you were sort of undecided on him. It's like you were just sort of like we were all those to the end of the whole story, and you were still just like, no, nah, I think we should just be friends. Yeah, no, I wasn't sold on him until he did the thing at the end. He which, did a thing. We're not going to go there because we're choosing a different guy this time, so. 
Oh, I wonder if that same thing happens in every iteration of the story, because that would be really satisfying. A few hours later and the crowds began to disperse. I am more than happy to return home to the comfort of my bed, my body and mind fatigued by the evening. The next morning I found Arabelle in the drawing room after breakfast, eagerly tearing open a pile of letters. So many letters already? I give a small laugh as I take a seat opposite her. She glances up a serious expression on her features. This is no laughing matter, Elizabeth. Another coin in the jar. These are invites. As I see she's gotten, like, sort of <laughs> Irish all of a sudden. These are invites, she, you know. These is today we make our most important decision of the season. Which man we're going to bone? <laughs> what would that... Oh, wait. Why don't we just switch the... Okay. And what would that be? Whose company we'll be spending the season with, of course. It would be impossible to split our time between everyone in town. So we must decide who will receive our interests. I see. She gives bright smile and leans close to me, placing her hands upon my knees. Seeing as it is your first year back, why do you not choose the engagement? Are you certain? I would have it no other way. She leans back and spreads out three letters in front of me. Each invite is elegantly written and well prepared. Arabella points to the first one. This is an invite to an afternoon tea later today. Though I believe Lord Stanton will be in attendance on this one, so maybe it would be wiser to avoid it. <gasps> Do not tell me what to avoid! <laughs> the way on her face disappears. You want a bad boy. In favor of a grin as she gestures to the next letter. This is a letter to a dinner party hosted by Lady Huntington in honor of the military being in town. Colonel Foxley will be there, along with that captain friend of his. See, this is why we chose Captain Blake last time, because Arabella was so excited, and I was like, oh, she's got a grin on her face. Of course, that's the one she wants to go to, so we're going to go to oh, that. Oh, I hope like choosing and someone else doesn't ruin it for her. And I didn't realize that by choosing to go to this party for what she wanted, I was choosing Captain Blake for myself. I know I wound up being okay, but... Oh, the game makes it very clear that it's like, oh, this person's going to be here, and this person's going to be there. But she's so into Captain Foxley, I feel bad choosing anyone else. Mm, yeah, that is kind of true. But I mean, uh, well, she had not... her fun last time. Now it's, yeah. now it's it's Elizabeth's turn. So Captain Blake. Oh, yes, yes, him. She touches the final invite. This is to a picnic hosted by the Kitterings. She <laughs> pouts a little in thought. <laughs> They're not the most known family, but they do bring the most delightful spread of food. So the event is quite popular. I do like food. A few families always attend the Fishers, the Sterlings, the Amesbury's if they're in town. With Mr. Amesbury. He is in Amesbury. Yes, you are paying attention. She gives it no one. Yes, I believe it is the only son in town this year, is it not? She waves away the thought and dismissal before I can respond, then spreads the leathers further on the table. So, which would you like to attend? Ah, there it is. So this will sort of give us our choose our own adventure path. So last time we did Captain Blake, so we'll, we'll rule that one out. So it's between Lord Stanton, the bad guy, not the bad guy, but the, the bad boy with a secret... Uh, Gambling reputation. Yeah, with a secret path. Not even a secret path, everyone knows about it. But maybe we can, like, you know, we'll be, we'll be awesome. We'll start wearing, like, leather and stuff. Or the Mr. Amesbury, who was... Uh, Spanish, I guess, was pretty much the only thing we knew about but him. he's the new mod, so he's the newest character, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, this one was added to it. So was it just the two before December? I wonder. Oh, weird. I wonder if they'll add more later on. All right, so we have a big decision to make. Let us know down in the comments which way we should go. Is it between Lord Stanton, the gambler, or, or Mr. Amesbury, the S Spaniard, With I the guess? the blonde hair. The, bl <laughs> the blonde-haired Spaniard, yes. So... Leave your uh, leave your ideas in the comments below, and until next time, good night, jelly beans. Good night. Good night. Oh my.